Yeah, we should be okay now. Okay, cool. So, the great guardian uh, god this gave us the power. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and viewers at home, um, is uh, based off of a dream that I had many, many moons ago. And, uh, not many, many moons ago, actually. Age Google Doc that uh, I now affectionately refer to as the Blightbringers. Um, I'm just gonna get 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 that, that, that English this time. Uh, get down right to it, and uh, I'm gonna read off the prologue that spawned off this whole thing. And while we're at it, Caboose, can you make this party private, please? Thank you. Have you seen the latest news? Old and a rainy planet that has been ravaged by a disease apocalypse. Mutated werewolves covered in a red substance that is uh, glowing yellow pustules ravage the surface in the depths below. A paladin decimates his foes on the battlefield. This is not the only planet in the system, nor the galaxy that has been overtaken by this disease. He is a beacon of light, hope, a bastion against the darkness of the void and a defender of humanity. He is the last one alive and not infected in this hellscape. With his assault rifle in his arms, he destroys his opposition and eventually he hears the telltale click that he has run out of ammunition. He reaches for another magazine, but he finds none. Staring down a myriad of the beasts, he removes his blade from his back and begins cutting them down to size. He destroys not only the wolves themselves, but also the parasitic tumors latched onto their backs. Roars, squeals, and squelches are the only thing he hears for a long while, and once he has finally come down to the last one, an imperator, a commander, he merely only cleans his blade on his cape. The beast lunges for him, and he dodges underneath it, slicing its entire midsection open and flooding the ground behind him with infected blood in one stroke. He fails to kill the parasite latched to its back. From where he is, he sees a clip of ammunition that had fallen from his person, and he picks it up, sheaths his uh, blade, and he finds, um, he finds the missing parasite that he lost track of rolling towards him at a rather alarming pace. In a panic, he lets loose all of the shots from his assault rifle, and he misses every single one of them. And it latches to his leg, and he screams as it begins to infect him. He can feel it melding with his armor, trying to push him over and make it its slave, but he resists. He pushes back with every fiber of his being, and he holds onto his humanity. Over the QEC, he hears his comms off officer whisper. Gods, are, are you alive? Yes. Templar. The comm is thrown and a small moment of feedback grazes his ear. He winces and the beast attached to him squeaks. He looks down at his hand which is now mutated. A bladed claw. His armor looks almost augmented. He looks at his other, he uh, his other hand, his human hand, and begins to walk back to his ship. The comm squeaks back to life. Vitals are good, no damage to the armor, mental patterns and brand activity are spiking, but that's to be expected. Are you alright? No, but I'm alive. And so begins the path of you being a paladin, a templar, and an imperator, all in simultaneity. So, like I said before, this was um, a dream that I had, and uh, after that point, I woke up, and I decided that I wanted to run this nitty-gritty, dark, futuristic, you know, space, Mass Effect, Warhammer-inspired campaign. So, uh, this is that result. So, uh, two characters that we're running with right now are, um, John, who's playing, uh, a, like, robotic, uh, biotechnological-driven, um, robot. Yay! Um, I get to be a robot! His name is Romu31. He is commonly referred to as Lights. And if anybody um, um, is a fan of Warhammer 40k, uh, that's my little tribute to Rumi 31 from Mechanicum, because I love him yep. so much. And uh, his species is called Eotren, spelled E-O-T-R-E-N. Uh, Caboose's character is Kaigith Harnstrig. Uh, he is what's called a Herstrian. Think of them like space vikings that are seven feet tall and have snow white skin. Literally, not like, you know, like snow, snow white who is really, really pale. No, literally porcelain white skin. Um, he comes from a uh, forested island chain called Svoberyast on his home planet of uh, Bardaga. And um, he has, you know, 
black tattoos that cover his face and his arms and his upper half um, of his torso. He's seven feet tall and weighs 300 pounds, and he has a huge plasma rifle that's called a biso. Uh, he has the sniper version, which is called a long arm. Um, so those are the uh, quick and the nitty gritty of uh, these two characters. And these two characters find themselves at the recruiting station of the Interstellar United on the capital world of Gliria. Picture, when, you, when you're thinking of Gliria, literally picture um, Nova from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, that kind of utopian, clean-looking planet, you know? Or like, uh, the fuck is it? Um, Coruscant, the giant, like, planet city from Star Wars. Shit like that, right? Really pristine, clean-looking place. And, uh, it is guarded as as you're coming down uh, through the the planet's atmosphere. You note that it has a huge, huge navy all around the planet, and like this massive blockade. And um, you're on this little like dropship looking thing, like a shuttle, right? And um, you could hear uh, the pilot, you know, signaling back and forth, making sure that they have clearance codes and blah de blah de blah. And um, uh. A kind of like middle-aged looking guy uh, who's human you know so middle-aged human at this point is probably seven seventy years old a regular human at this point because of advances in modern medicine lives to about 140 years old um, but uh, he's about middle-aged um, he looks good for his age skin hasn't completely like you know wrinkled out and shit like that yet um, in modern terms he would basically look to be about 40 um, and uh, he's sitting next to you and uh, the both of you he's kind of like sitting in between the two of you and he looks over at a uh, uh, Ro Mew and he looks over at uh, Kaigith and uh, he's like you two and Aglaria for any reason in particular? I've been away a long time I thought it was time to come back and become part of all of this again That's a good enough reason. I gave just grunt. He just fucking like rolls his eyes and grunts. Aren't you a ray of sunshine? <clears throat> it's not my job to be. That's respectable. So, uh, most of the flight besides that kind of goes, you know, kind of wordlessly. Um, this middle-aged man kind of just looks to be watching the scenery as uh, it goes by, and um, you know the ship starts to shake as you enter the atmosphere and shit like that. And uh, once you get through the atmosphere, you see this—you know, like I said before, this clean, utopian-looking city, right? Bright, shining skyscrapers covered in glass, fountains that are literally the size of a football field in front of huge skyscrapers that pierce the clouds themselves. And uh, the pilot looks back at you guys and says, "Welcome to Gliria, gentlemen." Time to get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> I like and, this uh, one. He touches down, and, um, uh, you know, y'all walk out, and uh, the ship door closes up once more, and, um, you know, he takes back off, assumedly probably to ferry more people back from whatever ship. Um, and uh, the two of you, oh, the three of you, you know, the other guy kind of waves at you as uh, he walks off. Assumedly, he knows where he's going. Uh, the two of you, however, kind of look at each other a little bit cluelessly, and uh, you walk over to the AI that's at the uh, the Port Authority. Um, and the AI uh, is this little, or VI, I should say, virtual intelligence. This little VI um, kind of pops open to life, and it's a picture of a fairly attractive-looking young human girl. And uh, she says, My name is Alaron, and I'm here to help you get to where you need to be. What is it I can help you with today? Marine Recruiting Station, please. And she gives you the directions to the Marine Recruiting Station. Um, there. And, uh... What was that, Caboose? <clears throat> I'm just cleaning my throat. Oh, okay. Um, I was drinking Wauda. Wauda. <laughs> so, um, you know, the two of you kind of walk wordlessly over to the Marine Recruiting Station, and there's a big, 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 long line out the door. And, um, 
you see the first picture that I sent you, A, and B, where is the other one? Da, 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 you see these two um, at the table of the Marine Recruiting Station. And, um, uh, you know, they're doing intakes and shit like that. And uh, the two of you just kind of get into a line. Um, uh, you get into the one that seems to be a little bit shorter. Um, it's the one of the guy who has three mechanical limbs. For those of you who are following along at home, um, I've sent them a picture of uh, a Interstellar United Marine. Um, actually, two of them. Uh, they're both at the rank of Templar, which is one of the highest ranks you can ascend to be in the Interstellar United, which is this faction that kind of oversees humanity, as it were. Um, the two of them are very obviously human. Um, the one has three cybernetic limbs um, and a red, like, laser power sword. The other one is kind of looks surprisingly like a titan from Destiny, and she has a polearm that um, is, you know, well over her head. Um, and both of their weapons are leaning dormant against the table uh, as they're recruiting people. Um, there's also, you know, some random pissant who happened to be stuck on this poor little Sod's job of uh, also processing newcomers. So, um, uh, the two of you walk up to the line, and I'm going to flip a coin really quick just to see who goes first. If I could find a coin. Here we <laughs> oh. go. Here's a coin. So, uh, John, your heads, and Caboose, your tails. Cool. Oh. John goes first. Um, so the Aotrin kind of uh, storms off to the front of the line once uh, this hooded figure calls him. And uh, he's sitting there, he's chewing on some gum kind of loudly. And... Um, he looks you up and down for a minute, and he goes, So, Exile, what's your name? Designation Romeo 31. I hand him an identity chip. Most recent okay. up, most recent repair and upgrade up the information. Okay. So, uh, give me, like, two seconds here to run this. And he takes it, and he sticks it into um, a little, like, tablet that he has in front of him. And the information is, like, going imperceptibly fast. But somehow he seems to be keeping up with it. Um, and uh, after about, like, you know, 20 seconds or so, he takes the chip out, hands it back to you, and uh, he goes, what do they actually call you, Robu31? Lights. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he's kind of right. So, um... Any particular reason you came to join the Interstellar United? Um, I have been away from humanity for a while, reconciling difficulties in my data and memory. It is time to rejoin. Okay. What do you think you can offer the Marines? Uh, five decades of activity on my current memories chip. Along with centuries before, um, I have significant gifts to offer as well. Aha! I see what you mean. Okay. You and I, we're going to have a little bit of a chat after uh, I get off of my shift. I'm also um, fully combat capable. I would hope so. You're trying to join the Marines. So, um, he hands you, like, a little paper form, and he sends you off to the side of the room to go fill it out. And, uh, he calls for, uh, the next person, and that happens to be Caboose. And, uh, he has to crane his neck a little bit to look up at you, and he goes, Could, could you do me a big favor? Uh, crouch down a little. Duh. So he just kind of, like, hunches way down, and he hears back crack, because he's been sitting in his fucking seat. Thank you. He's bitter. Um, what do they call you, Silver Yastian? Um, okay, I got, uh, Iron Streak of Bardiga. Could you, uh, enunciate this time, please? 
<clears throat> and he just like he's clearly just kind of a fucking introverted gent, but he goes <clears throat> Kaigat on streak of Bardega. Thank you. Um so you're what? Seven feet uh, tall? You gotta be if you're crouching down this far. Seven feet tall. Like uh how much muscle do you weigh, pal? Uh all of it. I'm pretty sure. And he uh he kicks out a little skill from underneath the table and he taps his foot on it. Do me a favor, step on that. <clears throat> so he just kind of like one boot by one puts his feet on it and hopes he doesn't crack the thing. All right, so you're and he gets up and he stands over and looks at, at the skill. All right, you're 302. Let me have that back, please. <clears throat> he steps off, kicks it and, over. Uh, thanks, Bill. And um, he uh, scoots it back under his chair. All right, so you're Svoboyastian, and you're at this point what? You got to be at least 20 if you're here. I'm um, 18. You're 18. But, uh, wow. How'd you get out early? Well, I'm possibly my tribesman's best shot at the moment. Uh-huh, okay. Do you have full citizenship rights? I do. Otherwise, Good. I'm sure I would have found complications getting here. Yeah, I was gonna say, because uh, otherwise I gotta tell you to turn the hell back around, man. Um, so, good. Good, good. Um, uh, you got your own weapon? Yes, I've got my bisol. Okay, good. Um, is it a long arm, I'm guessing, because you're uh, from Slovriast? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, that'll be really cool to see. Um, fill the rest of this out, and uh, come find me when I'm done with my shift. That'll be in about a half hour. So he nods and takes the little papers that he's handed. Um, so the two of you are filling out all the information that they need, and um, it's, you know, a lot of really personal crap, you know? Um, these people seem to want to know, like, literally everything about you. Um, and uh, there's a couple questions on there that are kind of invasive, and they even say in bold, please answer accurately. Um, so you're like, oh, I guess I fucking have to. So um, after you're done, um, the... Uh, the hooded figure walks back over to you, and very clearly so, because you hear his metallic boots clanking against the ground. And, um, he stands at about six foot, so he's significantly shorter than the two of you. And, um, uh, he looks up at the two of you, and he flips back his hood, and he's outstandingly pale. He's very heavily scarred on his the sides of his head. And, um, he has very clear, uh, cybernetic enhancements, quote-unquote, I'll say. Um, both of his eyes are glowing bright bright blue and um he uh he has his hair slicked back and uh tied into a, a very short ponytail um and he looks at the two of you and he goes i am templar trespasser calaron um i'm taking you both for personal assignment <clears throat> um i'm going to be your sponsor your personal mentor your trainer, and uh, just about any other kind of word you can think of to describe this type of circumstance that you're in. The next few months are going to be really, really hard. I can tell you that right now. Um, you being from Svoboyas and Herstrian and you know being a great marksman will really help, but uh, it's it's going to be hard even for you. I can tell you that much. Uh, let me see your paperwork. <clears throat> so he hands it over. And uh, lights. Let me see your paperwork too. Here you go. So he kind of flips through and skims um, through your paperwork, and he goes, oh, fuck it, I'll read it later. And he stuffs it into his cloak. So, um... You want to be Marines, do you? Duh. Yes. Well, um... The reason why I'm taking you on a very personal assignment is, um... There's been a situation that's arisen, and uh, have either one of you heard of a company called the Blightbringers? Have I? Only in passing. 
Uh, what about have you, I? Lights? Yes. Uh, flip a coin if you have one. Shoot. Uh, hang on, let me scrap a die. I'll just. It's just as easy. Oh. Oh, cool odds or evens. Alright, odds I know. Yep, yeah, five. There you go. Okay. I've heard of them. So, and, uh, Lights does does like information. He does sort of collect as much information on things as he can and tries to store it away. And okay, it, it is part of his background that he was very interested in his own history and the history of what was going on in the world up up to the point where he was rebooted. Right. So um, that's cool that you heard of them, but for you, I gotta explain it. So the Blightbringers, um, they are a and he kind of like walks up closer to the two of you and he kind of pulls you off to the side of the room um he's talking in a very hushed tone now uh so the blightbringers are a very small company um extremely elite and one of them could accomplish what probably 17 or 20 templars by themselves could accomplish um after uh, seeing the security footage, one of my superiors has uh, claimed that he wants to see you personally. Um, he thinks that you might be excellent candidates. Now, this is on a completely volunteer basis. Um, I'm assuming you both know what the hell infestation is. Of course. <clears throat> Um, the wolves, the red and yellow parasites, the disease that the IU and all of humanity has been fighting for 150 years now. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, a Blightbringer takes this infection into themselves in hopes that they could use it to combat the Hellmans more efficiently. They are walking tanks. An artist in the battlefield. And, uh... The ground is their canvas. Now again... Because this is so high risk, high reward... This is exclusively... Volunteer basis. You don't then... need to be a Blightbringer. You can simply go through the path of being an IU Marine, should you so desire. I will forward your paperwork to the appropriate recruiter, and you will go through the path of being a Marine as normal. Sign me up for this bright blight burner program. I will volunteer. I've been you, lights. I've been many things, apparently. Although I don't always remember them. I've been a teacher, an assassin, a tutor. I've been a scientist. It would appear that I am now meant to be this. Very well. If if volunteering is the way, then you may consider that I have volunteered. And uh, Calaron clangs one of his hands against his human hand, and he kind of rubs them together, and he's like, "Good, good. Oh, that makes me so excited. Uh, oh, that's right. This is going to be really, really cool. We're going to have a lot of fun, the three of us." Now I want I want to take you to meet my sister, um, both biological and in battle. Um, this is Chaplain Carix, and uh, the woman who was uh, sitting at the table with her helmet on, who looked surprisingly like a, like a Destiny Titan, who has a, you note, know, as tall as Caboose, seven feet, um, pole arm, with a small axe head on the top of it, walks over. And, um, uh, Caleron punches, uh, Carx in the shoulder and she kind of rubs where he hit and takes her helmet off and, like, headbutts him. And he just kind of sits there and he rubs his forehead and he's grumbling to himself. And, uh, Carx goes, so I'm assuming my idiot brother gave you introductions? Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. So, as he probably very well told you, I'm a chaplain. Um, I will also be helping you along your path. 
uh, where he cannot, I will. Um, he likes a more subtle touch. I like to be much more... Oh, what's the old phrase? In your face. So, um... Where the hell is their cousin? And, um... Calaron just kind of shrugs. Mechanical whirring of his one shoulder. And, um... Uh, Karix just kind of shakes her head and shrugs as well. You'll probably meet him later. Um, for now, it'll just be the two of us. So, if you would be so kind and follow me. And she leads the three of you off to um, another dropship. This one, as you note, is not white, blue, and black like the regular Interstellar United colors. This one is white, red, and yellow. And it has BB. Um on the uh on the side emblazoned on the uh the side of the ship you assume this is probably a white rigger branded ship um and uh you all mount up and you head in and uh it takes you up to a massive massive ship um called uh i'll just paste it into the chat um it's not man of war much like the uh the picture is saying um emblazoned on the side in big spotlight white and black uh, outlined letters. You see IUNS Radiance. It stands for Interstellar United Naval Ship Radiance. Yeah, it's a ZDF-1. And um, the, uh, the Radiance uh, opens up its bay door and uh, the ship flies in and it closes and y'all dismount and walk out. And um, then as uh, the, they take you to the bridge, you see this guy sitting in the chair. Um, this guy, uh, Caboose, even you've probably heard of him. Um, and John, you like immediately recognize who this guy is. Uh, he stands up and turns around, and he has um, a claw for his right hand. His left hand is a giant, like, bone mail shield. And, um,. His, the center of his chest looks like it has some kind of weird deformed mouth growing out of it, and on his back is like a kind of large, um, yellow glowing pulsing tumor. Um, and, uh, the guy takes off his helmet with his clawed hand, and, uh, he kind of has like the beginnings of like red like veins and like corruption and shit like that growing up the side of his neck but it seems to like it's stopped like at the ends it's turned black like it's almost dead but um he's really pale he has bright green eyes and uh he has long flowing blonde hair and uh he introduces himself to you he goes my name is alexander lightbringer mm. i am what you might call the leader of this merry band of misfits i am the head of the lightbringers um, I answer directly to the Sovereign and to no one else. Uh, I saw you walk off the ship, and uh, I thought that you two would be good fits, and I'm very glad that you volunteered to join my company. For the conceivable future, I will be... not I, usually I'm very busy. My associates will be grooming you to be the best possible candidate of a Blightbringer that they could possibly conceive. Um, both of these two are also hoping to be um, Blightbringers. So um, they will be undertaking some of the same uh, trials and tribulations as you. I'm sure you have questions. I will answer them now. Um, well, no, I've volunteered. I don't have many questions, at least. Um, apparently this is dangerous, not only because we will be in combat, but it is dangerous because of what will be happening to us. Yeah. You're going to be taking in the Hellman's infestation, much like happened to me by accident about 170 years ago at this point. And, um, that's solar years, so it might be different in your timelines, but, um, 
about 170 years ago. Um, he holds this claw. This happened to me. And uh, it spread, and then it kind of stagnated as to what it is now. Scientists study me almost every day, and they try and figure out how to replicate what happened to me. And um, that's really all there is about to it. But much like me, you will be taking in the Helminth infestation into yourself one day when I deem you ready. Um, again, this is highly risky. You might die immediately. We have no idea. We've never had Herstrian Blightbringers, and we've never had Aodrian Blightbringers. Assumedly, we would have to have the infection mount directly to your neurodrive, which would leave you vulnerable. Terribly so. So, the fact that you're here and volunteering yourself as an Aodrian exile means a great deal to the Interstellar United, and we will use you to the best of our ability, and to the best of your ability, and possibly even more. Well, there are few of us left who are as we once were, but there are enough of us that I could risk such a thing. And we appreciate that. Kai, I guess I'm sure you have questions. <clears throat> when do I start? When do you start? Well, since you put it that way, how about we start now? <clears throat> this is good. So, um, Calaron, and he kind of uh, looks up from mid nose pick to uh, Alexander Lightbringer. And um, Alexander just kind of shakes his head and rolls his eyes. Take them to the training room. I want to see what they can do first before I gauge uh, how much we need to train them and if they can go on immediate assignment with you because you know you have a mission tomorrow and uh um Calaron flicks the shit that was on his finger off and um looks over at the two of you and just kind of nods his head to the side come with me youngins <laughs> so um the two of you follow him and you go off to the Radiance's training room, which is basically just a giant silver dome with a bunch of holograph screens all along the outsides, and um, you even note that there's holograph panels on the floor. Hmm. So this is what we like to call the sim room. Here we can do full three-dimensional hard light training simulations, which means that everything that you see, you can touch, and interact with, which we think is really goddamn cool. So, um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go kind of simple. And he walks over to a panel that's on like the side of the room. It takes him about 30 seconds to get to the panel from where you're standing in the middle of the room. Um, and uh, the, the scene that erects itself around you is anything but simple. Um, you are surrounded by a hellscape, a literal hellscape. Um, there is, like, you know, trees and forests and stuff like that, but they're all, like, broken and on fire, and there's red corruption that's worming its way up them, and you can see it even now, it's, it's, it's moving, um, going up the branches of the trees and corrupting the trees and turning the bark black and sucking the life out of it as this infestation continues to grow and interact with its environment. And you hear of a loudspeaker. Um, there are ten Helminth wolves and one Imperator that you have to deal with, so have fun. And uh, the loudspeaker cuts, and you're left to your own devices in this uh... drenched, horrible, decrepit-looking forest. You have your I weapons. I assume I've got the long arm? Yes, you, you have you, your weapons. You are a sharpshooter, yes? <clears throat> Duh. Take a position. You. I will be your so, eyes. And I will hold you, enemies for you to shoot. If you take a position, I will find them for you. He finds a decent tree that he can get, like, midway up. Okay. Um, so you... Like, towards where you note about the middle of the room would be, 
Um, you climb up about halfway into a huge pine tree that has some nice sturdy branches that you can take a perch on. Nice. He starts basically breaking down um, branches above him and checkering them across the branches he's standing on to make almost like a woven platform. Okay. Um, cool. And so you do that. In the meantime, Lights uses uh, Pulse. Just lets you just puts two fingers to his forehead, and um, even you was feeling energy like a ripple of something through your mind as it passes out from him, almost like a sonar pulse, like a bat. Okay. Paints himself so, a mental uh, picture of the area. So then roll a um, roll a perception check. You're just going to do a basic d20, and you're going to add three. Okie dokie. Whenever you do a pulse, it's ba actually, yeah, three. Whenever you do a pulse, it's basically a triggered, like, self-triggering perception check, and you mm -hmm. add three to it. That would be, ooh, plus three makes 20. Nice. Okay, so you feel and see the life of the infection around you. Um, it is literally almost everywhere in this room. Um, you can also feel um, the... Uh, the aura of Calaron, um, somewhere in the room, but it's fuzzy, almost like it's being masked or hidden. And uh, then you can feel uh, Kaigith above you, and um, there's, like he said, there's ten Helminth wolves and uh, an Imperator. Um, they're all kind of scattered around the room. Okay, I put my hand up so that um, Kyrath can, can see it, and I point that way towards whichever one is i feel is closest to me through the through the trees there okay. is the first <clears throat> all right so and I'm i give and i give him a distance like you know there is the first 30 yards perfect so i line up my shot and i can like just make out like you know the image of like this wolf through the trees and i'm hoping that my plasma bolt will just burn through any collateral um and i take my shot Cool. Uh, roll to see if you hit and add 5, because the target does not see you. 17. Nice. Okay. Um, also, I should note that you're much like, or unlike, a regular Viso. Your Viso charges completely silent. Um, oh. And uh, it's just, instead of like that whoosh, it's like, it literally sounds like someone just kind of pushing wind past their lips. Nice. And, um, it's just like a small rotor fan right. type deal. And um, the the sound of your rifle, however, is very loud uh, once it actually fires. Um, right. Does the long arm fire a like, single big shot or triple burst? The long arm fires um, a imperceivably fast triple burst that interacts as one bolt. Oh, fuck yes. Um, so it's basically like taking three fifty caliber bullets straight to the chest with about a foot between them. Oh my god. Um, and because of the way the light interacts with itself when it comes out of a biso, it looks like a, like, two and a half foot long, like, lightning bolt. Pulse beam. That's nice. perfect. So, so um, yeah, you just see that whip through the fucking trees. And it kind of sounds like a, like a two-stage report. It's like... As this thing rockets down range, um, the your target literally has no time to 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 act or dodge, um, especially given the fact that he, you know, the wolf didn't know that you were there in the first place. Um, so uh, you get it right through the side of its neck, and uh, I'm gonna make a roll really quick for evens and nods on a d4. Okay, you actually managed to, um, when you shot it, it, it went through its neck, and it started to whip back at such an angle that the parasite on its back actually disintegrated with it. Nice. So now there's like a foot and a half foot hole um, in the uh, the neck and back of this wolf that kind of falls to the ground, and like, you know what like a D-Res looks like in Tron Legacy? Literally yep. what happens to this helmet wolf. Ugh. <sighs> My and, god, um, so after that, I'll use my move to literally, like, take a step and then vault off of my platform using my long arm to the next okay. tree I can see. And I'll make another platform. 
Okay, so um, I want you to make a dex check really quick. Sure thing. Uh, I got 13. Nice. Okay, so you do you do manage to hang on to a tree, albeit with a lot of difficulty. Um, the uh, the tree that you land on did not have as solid branches as the one that you're on, so a couple of them break, but you do manage to like, like like sling your biso on your back like mid fall and grab onto it uh one of the bigger branches with both your arms and haul yourself up Sick. um so uh you pull yourself up and you start to make a little platform and um you hear the howling of wolves off in the distance and uh it you know think like a regular wolf howl but it's decrepit it cracks it squeaks um it's it sounds pained almost um and uh, it just sounds like disgusting. And then you hear like you know the sound of like what sounds like a hundred thousand paws on the ground, running towards where the shot came from. Watch for when they arrive. I will watch our back. He just nods at him from the trees. His eyes are like glued down the sights of his weapon. I know we can um, hear them all heading for where the wolf fell to investigate. He'll pick off whatever goes there. I'm watching for others that are coming past us. Okay. Um, I'm hoping that they'll go to where they heard the shot, too, and completely bypass where I've relocated. Right. So, um, I communicate at the this point to of... him, like, I just kind of, like, whisper. Right. So, at the point of impact where the shot hit, um the body kind of like rematerializes you know so that this way the helmets have something to investigate and it doesn't look like they're just you know sniffing at air um and they see this you know like hole burn through this thing and you note that there's one that is significantly larger um has one huge grotesque mutated leg um that like it's so huge and dis like disfigured that the muscle is literally bursting out of the skin and there's like bone protrusions that are coming out of this thing's head and its skin and muscle itself is melted off of its face and there's just red corruption that's hinging over its jaw so that this way it can actually move. Um, and uh, one of this thing's huge grotesque tumor-ridden eyes um, kind of looks down at the point where the body fell and it looks back up at the, uh, the tree and it starts running towards it before you really get a chance to interact. However, there's uh, a couple helmets that start to sprint past the tree that you were in. That's fine. Sharpshooter, the big one. I'm going to pin it. Get ready. And as it runs, I yes. reach out with every ounce of energy in my mind, and I find that frequency inside of its body. And I send vibrations through its central nervous system until the entire system shorts out. Uh, I want you to roll a d20 really quick. Yeah. Ooh, and that was cocked. Damn it. That was a big roll, too. 17. Nice. Okay. So, um, you reach out with your, uh, with your pow <clears throat> with your gift, excuse me. And, um, you, uh, the helmet, you know, it kind of starts to slow down and it stops. Almost like it's kind of like just what the hell is happening? Like, it's a legit, it's looking around, trying to find wherever the hell the source of this vibration is coming from. And, um, uh, eventually it falls on the ground, cr like, crippling, screaming, in horrible, agonizing pain. And, um, uh, its huge mutated arm literally explodes off of its body. And it picks itself up on its three legs that it has. And really quick. Okay. Um, John, you begin. You send out another pulse to try and figure out where everything is, just out of reflex. And you can actually feel and see this thing's leg beginning to form back. Shoot it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I just whistle so that it'll look at me like a long, weird, Bardagan bird whistle. Um, so, and when it, like, turns its head, like, I just fire another fucking biso shot at it. Cool. So, uh, roll your d20. 
That's a 20, good sir. <laughs> Sweet. So it looks right at you. Witcher, Literally. stop eating the box! It looks right at you with its horrible, disgusting, disfigured face. And, um... You... You nail this thing literally right in the fucking head. And the parasite that's on its back, um, as this thing is falling to the ground, literally leaps off of its back and starts rolling on the ground like a fucking roly-poly bug. Like, it curls itself closed, and it starts rolling on the ground towards, uh, towards lights. Um, do I have a shot off on it, or is it light's turn? It's light's turn. Okay, uh, avert your eyes, and the other Helminth wolves that were charging towards the tree, uh, I set off a flash of blinding light. So I reach right out to the actual molecules in the air and start vibrating them together until they set off an arc. And a blinding, blinding, piercing point of light just flashes off right in front of them. Nice. Um, so... Uh, roll your d20 to see how effective it is really quick. That is a 16. And add like... Oh, okay. Never mind. So, I was going to say like, add like 4. But, okay, so 20. You know, that's that's a fine roll. So, um... You, you do that and uh, this huge pulse of light happens and you like shield your eyes and you cover your face right before it happens because you, you could actually kind of feel like the hair on the back of your neck beginning to stand up as the molecules in the air begin to vibrate faster and like this giant lightning crack kind of pierces the air it's a welder's arc Goose. i literally set off, i right. literally set off like a mig welder arc yep i figured and um the uh you know this giant blinding uv flash of light um pierces the air as this like kind of lightning crack sound happens for a split second and um, all of the helmets fall onto the ground, and uh, you can actually see that some of them are like burned. Um, and uh, you know the parasite that was moving stopped in its stopped in its little roll, and um, it's just like writhing on the ground, screaming. Take your shot. <laughs> yeah. I do exactly that. I just line right the fuck up with this fucking rolly ass poly. And I roll a 19 with my plus 5. Nice. They got um, poties. Cool beans. So. You do it, witch. Get up on that window. This thing literally makes a fucking donut out of this parasite. Um, you know how it just kind of like curled itself up? Well, you made a donut in the opposite direction that this thing wanted to be a donut in. And uh, <laughs> you burn a massive fucking hole through it, and uh, it kind of disintegrates and deresolutions uh, de into the uh, to the ether. You now have nine more helmets wolves to deal with. Yes, we do, and I will jump into another tree, good sir. So here's my roll. I rolled an eleven. Nice. Okay. Well, there are a couple so, of helmets lying there, writhing on the ground, blind. So. Yes. Um, so while he's moving, um, and you note that you hear a bunch of branches cracking, and uh, you don't get up nearly as high as you want to, but you still have a pretty good uh, line of sight on a few of them. Yeah. I'm trying to kind of descend now anyway. Right. So, um, uh, you, um, John, it's your turn. Um, while he's moving, I bring up my peanut while well, my submachine gun, and I rake a burst over the ones that have fallen. Cool. Uh, I want you to make three rolls. Okay, that's a nineteen. That's a nineteen, and that's a two. Cool. Um, so the first two, um, you you actually kill the both of them and their parasites. Um, your bullet spread is so wide to the point where it just peppers the two of them, right? The last one actually manages to, like, hear the, the bullets and kind of snap itself out of it and starts to get up and run at you. Cool. Okay, um, we're going to pause right there while I cut the video so we don't lose any. The first intro campaign of the Blightbringers, I'm hope, I hope that you both enjoyed it. And I love you, it. Uh, I love this is going to be a lot of fun. Looking forward to more.
Yeah, this was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to doing more. I think, as we were talking about before we started recording, we're going to do our best to not introduce any more campaigns. We have a bunch going, and we're going to try our best to get some uh, episodes of each of them um, in, in the can, as it were, and move oh, yeah. along with them farther and farther before we introduce any others. If there are things that you would like to see us try, that you would like to see us introduce, or things that you aren't enjoying, let us know in the comments. We always want to hear about it. Take care, guys. And we are...